All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Orbital Utility Vehicle, which is being made by forum user nli to work And what this glorious little mod is looking to add into the game is all the parts necessary to essentially build an orbital tugboat. And I couldn't be happier about that, as one of my favorite things to do in this game, mainly because I'm awful at building gigantic rockets, Rockets, is that I like to build my grand masterpieces in orbit through lots of smaller ones, and having an orbital utility vehicle to help me move all those parts around to just where they need to be to build my larger ship is just so darn useful, and plus, all these parts are just absolutely good. Gorgeous. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a gander at the currently four parts that make up this mod. Now, of course, for any ship, you're going to have to start with a command module. And here we have the Space Tug command module, which is roughly the same size as a Mark 1 command pod, as you can see here. Uh, but of course, has a vastly different styling to it. You have that more sort of uh, sci-fi industrial vibe to this thing, which just makes me happy, frankly. It's just so very cool looking. The modeling on it is just amazing. The texturing on it as well is some of the best I've seen on a mod for quite some time, and I just love the look and feel of everything, and overall, it's just a good, useful command pod. Now, to the stats, of course, as I mentioned, it is a one-person command pod. It does have some lights on it, which will use 4.2 electricity per minute, and those lights are right there, of course. They aren't the brightest things in the world, so you may still want to put on some uh, other spotlights to help out, but nonetheless, you do still have those lights right there, and of course, you can also turn on the cabin lights to get that nice, lovely glow. Uh, but yes, overall, very useful, yet small lights. We then, of course, do have a pretty decent reaction wheel, the typical crew report, 100 electric charge, and then 25 monitor propellant. So all in all, a pretty fully featured command module. Now, the next two parts that we're going to have a look at are in the utility tab. And if we go to the next page, we then have this next part, which is the push adapter, which is useful, but I also find a little strange. Now, it's useful to me because we have this lovely little uh, cargo bay down in the interior, which for me, I typically put in RTGs in here for additional power, but you could put really anything of use inside that bay that you would like to fit in. And it's just quite useful. Now, it does also have uh, attachment points at the front and back, of course, for attaching any other things. But of course, the main use for this is as a, a pushing mechanism. I don't know if there's a proper name for that, but yes, you can push things out of the way with it. <laughs> or alternatively, if you line up just right on something, perhaps you could push a, like a large fuel tank towards where you want it, but it has no grappler to it, which is why I don't personally find it too useful. But when I tend to build my ships, I, uh, God, I'm horrible with organization and they tend to get cluttered. So I like this push adapter because it keeps things from bumping into my car, my command module and destroying the ship. It's a pretty resilient little part. So, uh, yeah, it's good for that. Plus it does just give you a lot of good attachment points for like the sides here. So you can attach other lights, antennas, things like that, whatever you need. Now, the next part is my personal favorite on this entire thing, and that's the Space Tug Grappler. And if we pop it down here, it is very useful for a lot of reasons. First off, it has several different fuel uh, sort of setups that you can use here through the fuel switch. And it also does have a grappling hook. It does have RCS thruster, thrusters and a reaction wheel and an even better reaction wheel than the main command module. And of course, with the grapplers, it's just awesome. Now you can have it sticking forward like that. So for instance, if you don't want the pusher up there, you could put the grappler there instead. Uh, but personally, I actually like to have the grappler fr flipped around like that. So we have the pusher in front to keep the module safe. And then we just sort of back into things and then you know, go forward to wherever we need to go. And it's just a very, very cool looking grappler arms. The animation on it, not good here in the VAB, but out in the real world does look quite nice. They come out very well. And again, just like with all the other parts, this whole thing is just gorgeous. Look at that. We've got the little flaps here that actually, if we close back up the arm, you can see the little doors are closed up, holding the arms in tight. And then if you pop them back out, 
they just open up and it's it's just so cool you got the little tanks in there and as i said it can have different fuel setups so right now it's set to liquid fuel and oxidizer we have 180 liquid fuel and 220 oxidizer and also holding 400 electric charge but we can go to say 400 monopropellant and 400 electric charge and then back to the liquid fuel and oxidizer. So I guess really only two fuel setups, but nonetheless, if you want to go an all monopropellant ship, you can. And that actually does become a viable solution because, well, of course we do have these RCS ports on this thing, as you can see here, but the final piece is the engine, which would help if I'd go to the engine tab. And here we are, the extendable engine pod, which if we just slap that baby onto there, and actually I believe that's upside down, there we are, let's put it that way. And if we zoom out, there we go, we can actually, oh, which one's the button? Ah, extend, there it is. <laughs> there we go, the extendable arms on these engines. Again, very cool animation, so if you want to keep the engines in nice and tight for aerodynamics on launch, you're good to go, and then once you're in space, extend them right out, and you're fine. And these engines, let's see what the stats are on them here. Oh boy, okay, now here's sort of the wonky thing. Uh, it does require electric charge because it has an active radiator. Uh, it does have an alternator on it, of course. As you're firing the engine, it will produce four electric charge per second. Now, the engine itself can actually switch between two modes, and that's why I said the monopropellant tank in here is still useful because you can either power these engines by liquid fuel and oxidizer or monopropellant. Now, when you go full liquid fuel and oxidizer, they will produce a 10.125 kilonewtons in atmosphere, 45 in vacuum, and the engine ISP of 180 atmosphere at 800 vacuum, and they will use about a half a liquid fuel per second and a 0.6 oxidizer per second. Now, with the monopropellant, you're going to get 8 kilonewtons atmospheric thrust, 40 in vacuum, so not quite as powerful. Uh, the, in the engine ISP 150 atmosphere, 750 vacuum, and it will consume 1.36 monopropellant per second. So a little bit less powerful, but you should get a longer burn out of it, so it's just either way you want to go. And you can actually switch the mode in flight, so if you're running low on liquid fuel and oxidizer, but you still have some monopropellant, say, up in the command module or something, you can still power yourself with that if you so desire. But also you may notice that it looks like there's two engine ports on here. That's because this has a reverse thrust. So by default, it will start in, you know, forward thrust, so it will come out of this engine down here. But if you hit the set reverse thrust mode, it'll come out of here. So you can actually forward and reverse with this engine, which again makes it very cool as an orbital tugboat. As you can back into your, uh, or back into whatever you're wanting to grab with the grappler by going reverse thrust and then switch it back over to forward thrust to then fly forward to wherever you need to go and it just makes life so simple and of course you can attach the uh, change thrust mode to an action group to, so it's toggleable which just makes life a lot easier so you don't have to go to all the engines and go oh set reverse blah 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 very very cool indeed and just a very awesome looking engine so let's actually go and take a look at one of these that i have already put into orbit and it is towing something already in space because again this is just such a useful vehicle to use when building stuff in orbit whether it be a ship that you're building or perhaps you're putting together a space station or even just transporting goods from one space station or ship to another as you can see oh boy let's uh rotate this way all right excellent let's turn the SAS we'll put it to there excellent there we go we are towing a lovely little mobile processing lab a little bit wonkily because I kind of uh, turned at the last second when I went to grapple it but still with it hooked to the back we can just you know fly forward wherever we need to go to actually oh god I'm currently going reverse yeah see look at that there's the reverse thrust <laughs> <laughs> but there we go, I set the action group to three, so we can just switch from forward to reverse thrust whenever we so desire. And I actually really do love that, because, well, it makes it easier for switching. And also, the engines themselves are the very cool little blue effect on it. Now, if we throttle all the way up, it gets quite loud, and of course, we get the brighter, longer blue flame. 
Uh, but I typically have this thing, because again, it's a tugboat at a much lower th uh, thrust, and it's just such a cool little effect, this just sort of little jumping blue and orange flame. It is very, very cool. And of course, again, the cool awesomeness that is reverse thrust if you ever need that. Now, of course, throttle down. Now, if we want, we could also bring these engines in. Always good. There we go. And, of course, if we want, we could release this thing that we're currently holding on to and control the arms. Ooh. Disengage grabber. There we go. And then we can fly to our next target. Or, of course, we can... Oh, God, let's actually bring in the engines, too, so I don't uh, bump into this thing. There we go. Throttle up. Oh, God, I'm going reverse. Oh, boy. <laughs> That is the problem. I always forget which way I'm going. There we are. We could flip ourselves around. Ooh, flip around. SAS, work with me here. <laughs> oh, there we go. And of course, as you can see there, I do have the lights on. I didn't add any additional ones. All right. SAS, I definitely need you on because I am an awful pilot today for some reason. Oh, all of my things are a little bit reversed right now because I think I'm controlling from here, which we can do, which makes life easier if you're backing into a target because then it switch your orientation to this way. Uh, so I think I'm on that right now, even though I'm currently wanting to go forward. And if we so desire, we could try and fly into this thing to uh, push it away. But I think I'm going to miss it because, again, awful pilot. So three and slow down. There we go. Oh, yeah. You gotta love that reverse thrust. <laughs> it's so much fun. Uh, but yeah, this is the Orbital Utility Vehicle. It is just a whole lot of fun to mess around with and has just such beautiful animations to it. It's overall just a really cool little ship that you can build with this. And also, of course, is extremely useful because it is a tug, a functioning tugboat. And who wouldn't want that in this game? Now, I'm... Oh, God, I'm going to try and get closer, but Lord knows it's going to go badly on camera right now. <laughs> All right, but yeah, that is pretty much it for this episode, guys. Uh, if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, which I definitely would suggest that you do, uh, check out the link in the description, as always, and give it a try. And, you know, even if you don't want to build this particular tug, you could build all sorts of other things with it. Use the parts for other various things. And, oop, did not mean to hit flight results. That's the button I wanted to hit. Excellent. So we could actually take a look at the wonky shadows? What the? Oh, there we go. That's a better shadow. And yeah, so definitely go and give it a try. And if you build any fun tugboats with it, definitely send me a pic. I'd love to see. But yes, that is going to be it for this episode, folks. I hope you have enjoyed. And of course, that you do come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. <laughs>